Hey guys, what's up? My name is Kay Hart, and today I wanted to share with you how I use vocal samples and chop them up and turn them into some cool effects and transitions for my beats. So um, I, I just realized that I match the room I'm sitting in. I, I, I just moved all of my gear into a different room in my house and I didn't realize that I matched the walls, so it's gonna be a good day. But uh, anyway, I get distracted easily. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe. I've got a whole bunch more stuff planned on um, beat making, music theory, a bunch of really cool stuff. If you're a budding music producer or maybe just want some extra tips or to learn some cool stuff, maybe. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much. And I'm going to get into uh, Ableton Live right now and I'll show you guys what we're going to be making. Okay, so we're here in Ableton Live. And let me solo out the two uh, effects I have here that I'm going to show you uh, how to make. So this is one of them. And this is a second one that I did in a similar fashion. And real quick, because I know they sound kind of weird, just out of context, so I'm just going to play for you um, the section of my song. It's a, a synthwave style beat that I made. Um, yeah, let's just see how it sounds in conjunction with the rest of the song. Okay, so I feel like that sounds really cool in here. Um, I used it in what I would call a B section, which is, at least for the style that I do, it's usually a little bit quieter than the rest of the song, and there's a little more space to add something like this because it does add a lot of kind of ambience and a lot of uh, just kind of airiness and stereo, stereoness. I don't think stereoness is a word, uh, but it is now. So it's a really cool effect that you can use as a transition between sections or even just in a certain section if you want to add some extra ambience. So I have here a new sec, uh, ugh, a new session of Ableton Live and I'm gonna open up Splice and that's what I use to get uh, all of my samples. Not sponsored by Splice or anything, I just think they have some really high quality samples. So. This is the uh, sample I used in the previous uh, song. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that first. And I just changed the BPM to match uh, the previous song. And then what I've done here is I've just dropped my vocal sample onto uh, the simpler for, on a MIDI track, just a regular MIDI track. And I'm going to delete my normal audio effect track because I don't really need all that stuff for this. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to warp it so it matches the BPM. And anytime I'm working with vocals, I change it from uh, the beats to either Complex or Complex Pro. And it just makes it sound a little more natural. Um, helps keep the, uh, the timbre of the sound a little bit better. And it doesn't really <clears throat> attach to the transients like uh, the beats does. And I'm going to change the slice to manual so we can pick a section that we like. And so let's just make sure. In the dark. Okay, that's all good. And so the first step in making a cool effect with a vocal sample is usually to reverse it. Because, let me show you, if we reverse it, all I did there was I right clicked on the waveform in here and then hit reverse sample. Like that already sounds like a hundred times cooler without even really doing anything. And so um, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hone into a section that I like. And this is all up to you guys what you think um, you would like in your beat or your song. But I'm just going to recreate the one that I did because I already did all this tedious work of picking what I liked best. So I'm going to add a, a slice right here. And basically I want to start, I'm going to make this kind of like a riser, like an effect riser. And this is the section where she's taking a breath. And so there's not a whole lot of noise there. And it's going to build into somewhere right about here. So let's see how that sounds just uh, dry like this. Sounds pretty weird, like a, some sort of chant or something. And honestly, this doesn't need to be perfect. A lot of times, you know, if you want to avoid clicks and pops and stuff, you want to get it as close to the zero line as you can. But for this uh, effect, we're going to add uh, a bunch of reverb anyway. And so you're not really going to have that problem where it needs to stop directly on the zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just hit record here. And basically just record that uh, chop. I'm just going to put it right there so it's on the one. And we'll come back here and we're going to start by adding. Let's see. Where do I have it? Delay. And this is a free uh, delay plugin that you can get. I can put uh, a link to it in the description for this video. And this is just the preset. It sounds really cool. Bunch of different modes to it. Uh, there's reverse, uh, chaos. It's real weird. So I obviously didn't use that one for uh, my other song. I think I just used normal. And I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Give it somewhere, somewhere in there. Uh, like I said, none of this is, you know, you need to follow the exact what I'm doing. It's all what sounds good to you. I'm just kind of showing you guys the tools you can use to transform this into something that's kind of cool sounding. So like I said, we're going to start with the delay and then we need some reverb. And I'm going to use ROM by Native Instruments. Um, if you don't have ROM or a different reverb, you can totally use the uh, stock Ableton live uh, or whatever DAW you're using, the stock reverb should be totally fine. And so this is already at 100% uh, wet. I'm going to up the decay time to maybe something like 12 seconds. And I think that's totally fine for something like this because it's all for the effect. And then I'm also going to cut some of this um, just because it is going to linger for a while. I don't really need all of this muddying up the top end for no reason, because we're not even really going to hear it. It's just going to be hanging out there. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, I think that sounds, that sounds pretty cool. And the nice thing about uh, using a vocal chop as an effect is that you don't even really need to make sure it's in the right key. Um, like you can totally transpose this if you want it to be a higher pitched effect or You know, you can do a lot with it. You can add more stuff to this if you want. Um, this is just a really simple way to take a vocal chop and turn it into something that sounds really cool. So that's pretty much all I have for this one. So if you enjoyed it, please, like I said, consider uh, supporting my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.